<clears throat> Whoops. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Hang on. I'm going to get you down on the table a little bit more. There we go. All right. So, hello, everybody. Long time no see. I am trying to get you guys where you can see it and not have a shadow. Camera's causing a shadow. Hey, Beth, how are you? Um, I don't know what we're going to do yet. I've just put these up here because it's things I've been doing. Um, last Friday, I did some of this last week. Hi, Laura. <laughs> I'm a ghost, Laura. <laughs> So I did this. Um, hi, Candy. I did this mandala last Friday with Barbara Owen. She uh, did a tracing of one of hers from her one of her uh, books that you can get on her website. But I just drew my own while I was waiting for her. Uh, hi, Samantha. Hi, Kathy. Well, I was watching her, not waiting for her. I wasn't waiting for her to do anything, but <laughs> I took her Mandala Madness number two class. I took that class. Um, she says she's still working on it, and it will become available in not too distant future, she doesn't think. But I decided to try to do a rainbow on this one, and I really love how it turned out. When it was just the colors, it looked kind of eh. Um, but once you start, as Barb says, once you start adding the frosting, all of the little decor and decorations, it really looks great. Um, in fact, I think these little things right here look like some a ring of sombreros around it. And they all got a different color on the top of their hats that's just what they look like to me is sombreros and I've used the uh, gel pens to give you the dimension um, you can kind of see it when I angle it around you can see how it looks like it's got some depth to it I just like to use those so I think that turned out pretty good and then the other thing I did last Friday is I started this sheet during my uh, craft and chat session on my group is um, I might start opening a room up on Fibsville and all it is, is it's a room. It's a chat room. Um, it's not on messenger, but it's a room. And you can go in and out of the room. In fact, I didn't close the room. Anybody can use the room anytime they want to, to just get together and chat. But it's in my Facebook group only. And I keep that group small for my own mental abilities. Because once it, if I take on too much or a group gets too large, I start feeling lost and feeling stressed out. And I just don't want to feel that way. I want to... Still keep it fun. I figure there's lots of other groups that like to get big that everybody can join. But I kind of keep mine like a, a small pub collection where we all know each other and we can get together and craft. And so I started this sheet. It's on a piece of, I think, mixed media paper. And I've used the um, scribble sticks, I think to color these and I hand drew these and what I was thinking is I'm going to cover this whole sheet with just little doodly caricatures caricatures I can say that word caricatures but um, then I want to make copies that I can send in happy mail and then you can fussy cut them and use them any way you want you can take them and scan them and reduce them to make them smaller um, I didn't color the turtle yet, but I'm drawing them with just a big pen and then coloring them in and then just go back over it once I've colored them. Excuse me. I just ate a snack bar and it's not setting well. 
I go back with a big pen and just make some new lines on it. So there's a little girl and there's a little guy there and a lamppost and a turtle. And that's all I've got on here. So I um, might have to lift you guys back up. But I thought I would start by um, just drawing some other things. I don't know if I'll color them with you guys or not. We'll see. Yeah, that'll get it closer to me so I can actually draw. So hi, Mina. Mina, the only reason I didn't send you the address is it wasn't showing that we were um, friends on Facebook and I wasn't real sure if it was you. But if you can't locate it, my address in the group, I'll get back with you. Um, so yeah, I didn't even sketch these with pencil, I don't think. I think I just went in with pen and was doodling. So these are pen and ink and the color sticks. Um, I'm probably, like I said, I'm not going to color tonight. I'm just going to add a couple more doodles. Um, so like in here, I might add a little mushroom. I was reading an article on Facebook about Jungle Jungle Jim and, jung, uh, and Jungle Pam. I think her name was Pam. Um, stock car racing uh, history. It was pretty interesting. I was reading that before I came on here. See, it's just a little mushroom, and I think once I color them in and I make copies, it'll be an interesting sheet. So, hi, Janet. Who else have I missed? I said hi to Candy. There's Mina, and there's Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Um, anybody else? I said hi to Beth, Kathy. I think I got everybody. Um, The Artful Dabbler. Can't remember your name. I my my brain is mush these days, you guys. So bear with me. So welcome everybody. Um, let's do a couple more doodles on here, and then um, I want to share some things I got from uh, Amazon. Let's see. What else do we want to draw? Let's do do a little something down here. little snail. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Holly's here. How did Holly get in here? I didn't see her. Hi, Holly. It's Tori. Tori. Okay. And uh, trying to think of anything else wonderful or anything happened, but I can't think of a thing.
I get in the zone when I'm doing these little little creatures. You are so big, puffy cheeks. I've lost her behind the turtle. So the turtle and this lady will have to go together if they're, they're a pair. This turtle's going to be standing on her shoes. I should have put her at a different spot. Got little feet compared to everything else. I'll look at chat in here in just a minute. Chat's moving. I can see it out the corner of my eye. So I better look and see what you guys are talking about. I was watching Mary's review on the uh, Uh oh. Little sister's got scammers bugging her. That's never good. It's like all I can think of is, don't y'all have something else to do? Get alive. <laughs> Scott tries to keep them on the line as long as he can to waste their time. Because he's, he said, if I have the time to take the, to waste their time and more power to them. He said, I'll keep them on the line. I'll give them something to do. I said, I just don't want to be bothered. I just don't want to deal with them. And they tell you, oh, get on the do not call list. Ah, it doesn't work. We'll color her up. She's got a turtle on her feet, but that's okay. Hi, Mary. I saw your review on the, on the um, laminator, and I was sitting here going, open it, Mary. Open the pocket. It don't fold it. Just open it. And then, um, what was else was I saying? No, don't put anything too thick through. That'll damage it. And then what else? Um. Oh, I said go on Amazon. I was sitting here talking away at you, Mary. I was telling you, get your get your receipt off from Amazon.com. Even if you save it as a PDF, you'll have it for proof. And uh, 
then I was like, oh, yeah, and you can get the pockets in different mills, meaning thicknesses. So you can get some that are really heavy, like real heavy uh, luggage tags. I might send you some luggage tags that I got thrifting. I got them right here. I'll stick some in an envelope. What's in here? Yeah, luggage tags. I think I sent you a couple before, but I can send you some more. See, they've already got the hole in them and everything. I got these thrifting. So I'll send you some. And then you can make tags. You just want to make sure when you are doing stuff with laminating sheets, you just want to make sure, you see how they have a little border on the edge where the it's folded? There's like a little area there. You want to leave an area like that all the way around your piece because if you cut it close, it'll just come apart. Um, that's my experience with it. But I'll stick some of these in the mail to you, Mary, so you can play with them some. I've got a bunch of those. I think I got two different boxes. So I'm going to draw one more thing and then I'm going to put this sheet aside and I'll work at coloring this on Friday when um, we do our craft and chat. It's at 10 a.m. Eastern in my group. And anybody can come in. You can, um, if you have a mic but no camera, you can still come and chat and watch everybody that it does have a camera on. Um, you have control over whether you want to be on screen or not you can just use your mic if you have just a mic you can do that if you want to be on but you don't want me to record there's no worries there i don't record any of it um i just wanted to have one day a week where i could get together with some other crafters and we just have a really good time um it, deborah adams and janet nash and janet Baum and who else um, Lois came in and uh, Samantha popped in one time and um, um, I can never remember. It'll come to me later. Yep. Deborah Adams. I said her earlier. Um, the other lady in um, UK, um, she takes care of her mother. Why can't I can't remember her name? Fran. Fran Baker. Fran Baker comes sometimes. And we have such a good time. And Fran makes some really pretty things. And we get her crafting. And she gets she gets going. And she said, you know, I craft more with y'all than I do when I'm sitting here taking care of mama by myself. And um, we just have a big time. And we share our whatever mid-morning snack. Or for Janet, it's her afternoon snack. It's just fun. So I, I would encourage anybody that wants to just pop in. You don't even have to stay the whole whatever time. Um, we usually stay on from three or four hours playing. We just, people come in and then they leave and it's just fun. So let's see, what else should we draw? Let's see. I just wanted to put a bunch of different things on this paper that, that people could cut out and stick in stuff. And everybody seems to like my little people that I draw. So I thought, you know, that would be a fun way I could make a sheet. Janet loves it. And I do too. And Janet comes in and out and she's cooking and stuff. I'm, I keep thinking maybe I should set up in the kitchen and we could all cook together one morning. Um, make, make a meal together or something. I don't know. A kitty or a puppy. Well, let me see how I do on, on those. I probably should do something small up here in case I decide to do something. My sister's new puppy that's half blue tick hound and half Great Dane is growing so fast. She posts pictures of that dog and the dog's name, her name is Blue and, uh, She's just, she's growing.
I'm not uh, real good at animals. <laughs> They're very much cartoon animals. They're not lifelike like Mary's able to do, but that's okay. Everybody draws differently. Just accept what you're good at and get better at that. And don't worry about being like everybody else. Uh-oh, I'm hearing hissing. Hang on. All right, guys, let's not be ugly. Who's out here that doesn't? Uh-uh, no. I just opened the porch so Callie can come and go. We will get back to those project bags and finish those. I just haven't felt like sewing the last couple days. So that's why I haven't done it. <laughs> All right, those are supposed to be little bows that are on her ears. I'll fix them when I color it in. So that's my weird looking doggy. <laughs> she looks so funny. Oh, well. It'd be All right, let's give her a little spot on her front here that's. There we go. We'll make that white when I color her in. So there's that. Um, I got these in. I got ordered myself some things. These are um, base coating brushes with premium synthetic bristles for a smooth, even coverage. So I can hit, do backgrounds, you know, just a rough in background really quickly. I saw these on there and then they didn't have them for the longest time. Uh, and then they came back in and I said, Ooh, I need those. So now I can make a bigger canvas background and maybe do some paintings that I can hang up here in the house. I might get good enough to want to keep them <laughs> without painting over them and over them. So I got those. And then I bought myself, this is a pricey book for what you get, that's for sure. This is a Fabric for Fashions. It's a swatch book. And what it does is it gives you samples of fabric. So like if you wanted to know what an interlock jersey is, this is the classic interlock. This one's a single jersey mercerized. This is an interlock jersey, a jersey sweatshirt fabric, and a ribbed fabric on the bottom. So they give you five samples of each type of fabric. Looks like this one was put together quickly. They didn't even let it glue dry. Um, this is a silk seersucker with elastane, so it stretches. A silk jersey with elastane. So these all have elastane in them. This is a silk and nylon with the stretchy stuff in it. And then nylon with elastane, cotton poplin with elastane. So you can go through here and if you buy fabric, say, um, at a thrift store or something, you could go through this book and it gives you the fabric weights and um, the yarn counts and what all of it means. 
So you can learn about each fabric. And this is all cottons. And then this is all, looks like silks. So you've got some silk crepe de chine, and then there's a poly, polyester crepe de chine. So you can see the difference in them between real silk and then the polyester. See, that one's all glued funny. But I've been wanting this for a while, and I had it on my wish list. And finally, I said, you know, I'm just going to buy that book for myself. These are all wools. Um, a suiting weight. This is a worsted suiting weight. That's a suit, worsted suiting weight. This is a wool basket weave, a melton wool, and an air light wool, which is real more like a uh, sweater. So this is basically for me to expand my knowledge on fabrics, really. And you can see it doesn't like just being flopped open and closed. But we'll become friends eventually. So I'm going to read through this and see. Um, here, here it tells you that there's all these different colors. Um, so the introduction... Uh, fibers to fabrics. Section one is your animal fibers. Section two is your plant fibers. Section three is man-made fire fibers and then useful information. Um, it'll tell you care and strands and that kind of stuff. So this book that I got, this was $73. But I think it'll be very useful to me. So I'm not going to worry about how much it costs right now. <laughs> then I went looking for stencils. I can't remember who was doing. It might have been Tanya and Lisa. And Lisa has so many beautiful stencils of uh, large flowers or... Um, leaves and that kind of thing. Well, then I, when I started looking, these popped up. So let me get a piece of black cardstock so you can really see them. They are round shape. And I saw them and I said, you know what? I bet I could do some painty papers and then do these on top of them, like in black, and then cut them out. And I could have an instant round journal. Let me see if I can tell you what the name is here on it. It just says eight piece C R E A P booking new M M O O six nine made in China. If I, if I can remember, I will go. I saw that Mary. I saw some of them that you were doing. See, look at this. Isn't that pretty? There's that one. And then a rose with a leaf. And then this one I think is really pretty. And even if you did, I'm there's supposed to be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe I've got one stuck together. Let's put another one down here. So that one, it's got like the seed pods next to the bloom. I like that. Some of them aren't completely out, so I'll have to clean them up. Oh, there, there is... Oh, I saw this and I was like, what on earth? And it's just the inside of this one. And I didn't pay a lot for these. These are just about the same price as the um, doilies that I got, not too. Yes, these were on Amazon. And then let's see, this one is here. 
I did not get a receipt. Amazon's been getting crazy about no receipts. But I can go back to Amazon and I can pull up my order and look at it and, and get a link to the product. So those, I have never seen round like this. Um, it just, let's see, it just says, it's got X-O-O-217-1-N-0-5 on it. I don't know if I can lift this letter, label or, and see what's under it or not. No, that's all in Chinese underneath it. That won't help me at all. Let me see if I can open another tab. If I lose you guys, I'll be right back. Let's see if I can find it on here real quick. Let's see if I can find it on here real quick. Rebecca, hello, Rebecca. Would you like to spend money with us today? Not right now, thank you. Oh, and I ordered a healthy snack pack. And I told um, Scott, one of them's a snack. He said, well, it's one box, right? I said, no, it's not the whole box. They were $7.99, eight pieces, creative DIY plastic stencil plant flower pattern template reusable round painting journal stencils for scrapbooking from the laugh store. Looks like Janet already got them. So anyway, <laughs> there you go. Actually, yours, yours looks different than the one that I got, but that's okay. There you go. You get a couple of choices there. Just says quantity is eight exotic floral patterns are elegant and beautiful. User-friendly features, durable and lightweight, thanks to made of eco-friendly pet plastic. Material, ne neither too hard nor too soft. No sharp edges, safety for your, even for your, even for your kids. Oh, yeah. Translation. Lost in translation. So that's those. What else did I get? I got a big jar of cinnamon. So the only other thing I had out to do here is I have some little pieces of paper and I was just going to do a quick um, mandala on a tiny piece. I like to do tiny little ones sometimes. And um, the only thing you really need is one of these and a ruler to do this one. Um, and I'm going to do pencil so that I can erase the pencil lines later. Trying to find a pencil with a decent point. And um, I'm going to just draw from corner to corner. And this is just a little square. And it is a three-inch square if for anybody that's interested. And I'm just dividing up quad quadrants. And this one won't take long because it's pencil. I mean, it's it's small. I'm pencil. Boy, my brain is crazy. And then I'm going to come over an inch and a half. Inch and a half. And draw a line there and do it this way too.
And this is just a, a quick one. Um, if you have a protractor, is that what it's called? I can never get the names correct. Or is this a protractor? I don't know. Um, but if you have one of those, you can do the angles around. Like every 10 degrees, you can make a mark and then draw to the center from that mark. And you'll end up with more spaces. And then you just decide how big or small or whatever you want. This is a really old Ramus. And I'm going to put the little pin in the middle. And then I turn the paper. The ruler is going to come over and get in the way. And then you change the width on this. Try to get it in the same hole every time. I might come down and make it smaller again. Probably come out one more. Because I like to do what Barb does and cut them out and then mount them on black once they're drawn. All right. So I've just done a bunch of, bunch of circles. Did a bunch of circles. Okay. That's awesome, Mary. All right, so now this line didn't come all the way around for some reason, so we'll just kind of eyeball it. Um, whatever you decide to do, start in one spot and work your way around. Do that same motion. That was what Barb said the most important thing is choose a motion and repeat it all the way around before you add another thing. So I'm going to make a little mark that goes halfway between the center and my first circle. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the halfway point with my pencil all the way around. And I just make these up as I go along. I, I just do whatever comes to mind. And I say, oh, okay, I like that. And whether I like it or not, once it's down, it's down. All right, so now I have a place to land. I wish I could get in closer. There we go. So you can see my little dots I made. So if I take and I decide to, um, let's do a curve and skip every other one and see what happens. So if I just do the muscle memory motion, and then you can just do a curve turn and do a curve and turn and do a curve and turn and then do a curve. Now I can do another one and start with the next one over and I'll have an overlapping design in my center that looks kind of like a spirograph like that. And are my lines perfect? No. Once we put some color on this, it is not going to matter. The last I saw, Arlene was home um, and recovering. So that's the last I heard. Janet might have heard something new. Or if Arlene's listening, Arlene, we're worried about you. Um, so now I'm going to do some little, I call them seeds around my lines. 
up to the next line. So just a little like oval. No matter how hard I try, these never come out exactly the same size. I just don't worry about it because it's just all about having fun with the doodling motion. These are pencil lines. They'll get erased eventually. All right. So now let's see. What do we want to do next? Maybe we want to put a little line halfway between our ovals like this. And the main reason to do this is to give your eye something to focus on, to, to draw toward. Okay, so we've got the little mark halfway between. So now let's do a little arch up to the next line like this. So come up and do your line over. And I'm only doing it in one, the same direction. Complete that motion first. Don't try to switch back and forth between motions um, because it will, um, you'll just get confused and then your shapes will start misforming themselves and they'll look um, even more odd than you'd think uh, because you're switching your muscle memory goes this way, goes this way. So if you start going this way and then back this way, you can lose track as you're going. So now I'm going to go the opposite way and bring it up. So I'm making little petals now. And do that same motion all the way around. All right, so now we got that. So now I'm looking at this thinking, what else do I want to add? Um, do, 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 do. I'm not going to erase anything until I um, go over this with a marker. Yeah, I mailed her a card today, too. Um, let's see. You can do whatever comes to mind for you. You know, um, I've got this little skinny row around. So what I might do is just do circles around there. All right, I'm going to have to... Let's see. I'll give you something else to look at. Here's my little concrete chicky boo that I did with Barb. And here's one of my um, Picasso at Critters. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Let's get back to busy. This was such a fun thing to do. I'm, I'm taking pictures of more cracks in the sidewalk, and I think I'm going to create an album in um, Aunt Beck's creations of the cracks I find in case somebody else wants to do this um, cracks critters like um, Barb did in her live a couple Fridays ago. All right, let's see. Trying to decide what I want to do. Sometimes that's the hardest point. Well, let's do halfway on the second line up. Again, you're just making an eyeball mark. If you want to be exact, you can, but you don't have to be. It's just all about having fun. All right. So I'm going to go from the point I just made down to the point, just line like that. I'm doing these a little darker than I normally do, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So now I'll go the opposite way. Okay. So now we have that. All right, and now I'm going to do another oval, I think. Come here and go up. If you make a little weird mark, don't worry about it. It's just pencil that we're going to erase. I'm going to do the little halfway mark again on my very outer line. All right. And then I'm going to do the petal shape again from here up like that. And again, I'm only going to do the one direction. My ovals would probably have been better if I'd done that, if I'd done one side and then came back and did the other. All right, now we'll come back down this way. See how I messed I messed that one up. I'm, that one I am going to erase. All right. So now I'm going to get a um a sharpie. It's just a regular fine tip sharpie, and I'm going to start going over the lines that I've made 
that I think I want to keep. So I'll do, the, do them just as I drew them. Ovals on here. If you don't have one of these, you can also make different size circles on your square and divide it up. Um, just like I did to make the divisions by going corner to corner, corner to corner, halfway through, halfway through. Um, and you can still have a divided sections, but um, Your, your circles may not be evenly spaced, but that would be okay. That would be a different kind of mandala, right? I'm focusing on the lines I drew after the rounds. I'm not going to add any of the rounds in right now. I'm skipping those. So where there was a line that I made a circle, I'm not going over that with the Sharpie. Only going over the lines I added first um, after, after I had made the circles and I added the lines. Those are the lines I'm adding now. So they're nice and dark. Really, you can do these any way you want. You can keep whatever lines you want. Um, I just do this to, to bring out the parts that I added as design elements. Um, and then I will go back and decide if I want to keep any of the original guideline um, circles that I made. When you get it to the point that it's drawn and you've got some color on it and it's frosting time, that's the point that I like to keep some, like keep a little stack of those. And then if you're having to wait somewhere and you're planning to do all of your so-called icing or your little decoration doodles um, with a single color, this is the perfect size to carry with you because you can pick up a book or something and put it on there and just do it while you're waiting, like in a doctor's office or whatever. And this is small enough you can slide it back in your wallet or whatever. It gives you something to do to fill that time when they make you wait because you know they make you wait. All right, so I'm looking at this and it's really pretty and it would be fun to um, go ahead and color it just like this. But I'm also thinking about the time I want to spend on the doodling part. And I'm thinking I would like to add a couple more lines with my pencil and then go back and darken them. And the reason I'm not just putting in more dark lines with a Sharpie is that's permanent. If I put these in and I don't like them, you know, then I can't erase them. With the pencil, I can just erase it if I want to. So I think what I'd like to do is to add another spot along in here. Maybe come halfway up on these. Find your halfway point on your outer petal. 
and put little marks halfway between the top here and the tip of your petals on the outside. If you think you can um, do it without putting the eyeballing, the little marks to give your eyes somewhere to go, feel free to do it. But I just, I like to put the little guideline little marks halfway. All right. So now I'm going to go from the tip of here up to that line like this. I'm doing what I said don't do. I'm doing both directions. And the Sharpie that I put down is to just help me figure out if I wanted to add more. And what I do usually is I'll add the color and then I'll go back and go over all my black lines with that gel pen that gives dimension. Or if you don't want to put black, you could put a color over top of the black lines of the Sharpie in one of those pens. Um, I have several different colors in those. The gel pens that leave the kind of lifted section. The thing about those gel pens is you really have to let them dry because if you run your hand through them, they'll mess it up. All right, so let's erase. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let that Sharpie sit and see what you guys have said. Oh, those days right before shopping. Yep. And I'm just going to erase everything. And I like a white eraser because it doesn't smudge anything. So we're getting rid of all of the pencil lines and then we'll add some color. And I don't know if you guys want to do the frosting motions or move on to something else. But we can move on to something else if you'd like to. get rid of all of this. Oh, bye, Kathy. Kathy's got to go figure out what she's going to make. I'm going to color like I did the other day with the um, super tips. Let's think spring colors. So yellows and greens would be nice. Let's just do yellows and greens. I got two greens, two, two yellows. So I'm going to color the very center. Let's see. Let's. Okay. 
right, there's that. And then the tips of this, I'm going to just do in this darker yellow. Like that. Oh, we need some color. What color? Let's see. I think I'm going to, what color goes good with yellow and green? What other color should I use? How about a purple? I think that would be pretty. I think that'd be pretty with it. What it was Candy looking for? All right. I'm just going to put these in the purple. If you go outside the lines, don't worry about it. Remember, we're going to bring those black lines back up, back up later. We just want to get some color on. All right, I'm going to take and use the light green behind all of this here. Trace is here, Violet's here. All right, I'm going to bring the yellow back. Was there a cake candy? Did I miss the cake? Or did you have an icon pop up that was a cake? I need to scroll back and see what you guys are talking about. know about anybody else that does these but I don't think I could draw the same one twice if my life depended on it because I don't know every every single one of these is different I I don't think I could do a duplicate on any of them they're all one of a kind Now, um, I've seen Barb put color down with a marker and then maybe come back with ink tints and add some shadow layers. And you can do that if you want to, or you can um, use a different shade of the same markers you're using and add some darker areas.
All right, I'm only using this light green, and then I'm going to come back with the dark green and add some darker areas just so you can see what that looks like when you do that. And then it'll be ready for what we call frosting. And you can do it um, like all in black, all in white, all in gold, all in silver. That's what the fun part of these is, is you get to decide how they're de decorated and what kind of pens you use and that kind of thing. Um, I just really enjoy them. There's something I can do to occupy my brain when it's wanting to focus on the negative. It's an attitude adjustment for my brain. <laughs> but I think what we'll do, because we've got all these really rich colors on here, let's just use gold and do some frosting with gold. I like to do like um, gold or black and then come in and add dots and other little things with the white and it just makes it pop. And I might bring the, the one I did the other day back over. I don't feel like that one's done. I want to add more. Um, you have to decide when it's done for you. But once you start, it's hard to stop with the decorating. All right, so now I've got the darker green. So I'm just going to come up around these. Color down in this dip a little ways. And come up around them. Once you commit to something, just keep on going all the way around. But if you don't like it, because see right now I'm not liking this too much. But I'm going to keep going because I've committed to it. All right, see, I think it went a little dark, but I'm going to keep going with it. This time I'm just going to outline the edge here. Just so I'm carrying that dark green out to this green section. really caring for that but I'm not worried I'm going to uh, add the frosting now this is the fun part got a fresh gold pen so that we don't run out of ink it's gotten awful dark I decided to close the blind is everybody still here it looks like the numbers of people watching is dropping and dropping and the chat not moving so I'm beginning to think I've I've lost everybody I must be boring everybody to tears sorry these are my favorite gold pen 
say always right here but cooking mary's here all right i'm gonna just do a spiral in the middle with the gold and then maybe put a dot in each of the little points which will probably cover up most of the color but right now i just don't care about it. So now I'm going to come from the center between those two and outline the dark green and make it all better again. You ever watch that show, uh, Real Families, where they find lost relatives? I was watching some of those episodes on, on YouTube today. It's very interesting how that man can find the families for those people. Mary heard gold, her ears perked up. And then what um, Barb always says is, when in doubt, add dots. But before I do that, I think I'm going to go around my ovals again and maybe put a dot in the middle I was going to put more dots but they kind of get lost once the gold goes on because this is such a small design but when in doubt add a dot can't go wrong with dots and if you want to bring the black back out, you can, or you can just go with the gold. I think this one's going to get left with just the gold. Um, don't think I'll even come back and add white on this one. Sometimes I do. All right, so I'm going to add dots in the green. And I just... Sometimes I worry about having the equal number of dots. And most of the time, I just don't worry about it. I just, whatever, however many dots will fit that are about the same size. And just go with that because there's only so much space. And each one is different. And because this is a gel pen, you don't want to um, wipe across it because it takes time for this stuff to dry. If you wipe across a gel pen, it'll just smear it all over the page. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. If I can get a hold of it, I'll lift it up, adding the gold. Camera isn't wanting to focus. Well, there's dots around the edge there. I'm going to do a stick with a dot on top. Stick with a dot on top. I don't know. So white might be just what this needs to bring it on. So let's finish with the gold and then maybe we'll add some white. Let this gold dry a little bit and then we'll add a little bit of white. I'll have to get a white gel pen out. Maybe put the th some two, three, four dots in the purple ovals. One, two, three, four dots. One, Two, three, four. It's just make a mark and turn. Make a mark and turn. That way you don't lose track of what you're doing. And you can do a wavy line. 
up the light green section. I keep forgetting this is the time you guys are all usually eating dinner or preparing dinner. But now Scott's, he's got some days he has to be there at one, some days he has to be there at two, some days at four. But I think the 4 p.m. to midnight is his new schedule, his real schedule that will settle in, I think it's July. He'll be noon to midnight or something like that. No, 4 to, four to midnight. It's not a 12-hour shift. I'm just doing a wiggle line. Maybe I'll just trace around on the inside of this one. Then we'll let this dry and I'll see if anybody's said anything in chat or anything. I haven't been anywhere or done anything, so I don't have a thrift haul or any of that. And I don't have drop paper down, so I don't want to do a, um, a pick 10 tonight because I don't want to make a mess of my cutting board. So this is all I had kind of planned. Might not stay on too much longer. But we'll let that dry a minute, and then we'll come in and add some other things. Um, let me go get another, get my gel pens out. Mr. Howard, I was wondering where you were, buddy. No, I was afraid I'd been gone too long and everybody would forget me. So I said, well, I better get on there and do something where they all run away. The pens I was talking about are called glaze pens. The glaze pens are the ones that give you the dimension. And I have a dark green one that I might use to bring some of the lines back in. Whoops, blew it across the table. It's still pretty wet, but it's got a lot of gold on it. Thank you. That gold can now go in there. So, let's see if this pen will work here. Whoop. I keep trying to blow it to dry it off and it blows away. This one's not leaving a nice round dot. Remember, once you commit to something, just keep going because you can't go backwards.
it loses its roundness. So it's making like a letter C instead of a circle or a dot. Clean the tip off. Maybe it's picking up the gold. Probably should have got another little scrap of paper instead of making this background paper my uh, clean the tip off my pen. The gel pens get like a little booger on the end. If every once in a while you have to kind of clear it or it'll just, it won't make nice little round shapes for you anymore. It'll start making weird shapes. I'm just putting little, little dots on either side of my squiggly lines. This, uh, Tiny little things, not going to hold too much more colors uh, as far as frosting decoration anyway. So I'll come back in with the, um, the glaze pen and then we'll call it done and set it aside to dry. And then I will uh, cut it out and mount it maybe on this dark paper. And then I can stick it on a card and it'll be a little note card to tuck in with Happy Mail. Or you can scan it and turn it into, um, into, um, into stickers to put on the backs of envelopes. So let me put some of this glaze pen on and we'll see how that looks. Blame the poor gold. <laughs> See if I can get this thing flowing. I can't seem to get it to do. All right. Maybe I'll just do it on here. Doesn't seem to be flowing. Um, come on. I can't see where it's putting anything down. Oh, wait. It's not flowing to suit me, so I'm going to get a different color. That one's never been opened, so we're not going to do that one. Has this one been opened? Yeah. This one's flowing good. 
But I think that green is just getting dry, Mina. I think that's my problem with that one. There we go. That's much better. And now this, this stuff you really don't want to run your finger through because it's, it's a nice thick line and it's very wet when it comes out of the pen. Looks like there was a little bit of the green trying. If you guys can see how that brings the de decoration back to the top. Sorry, I got quiet. This kind of stuff, you just, it gets meditative and <laughs> I just forget to talk. Sorry. You can use all kinds of things to do your decorating, your frosting. Uh, gel pens are just one. You can use Posca pens or markers of some other kind. Basically, use what you have. I might give it a darn good shake in later, uh, Mina. Shake it down. Give that green the big shake down. 
All right, maybe put, let's put some little dots in here with the black. Different sizes. Put a big one out here and then a couple smaller ones. I don't know how Barb Owen comes up with all the different things that she does on a mandala, to be honest. She just blows my mind. When in doubt, add a dot or three. Might even put a black dot in the in the middle of the cold dot on top of the stick after I get all the way around here. Nope. No, ma'am. Close up. Honey, I closed the windows. It's time to shut down for the night. What's the matter? You want to see out. Why? No, no. I got a booger on the end of my black here. little dot in the middle of that black gold and that black gold put a little black dot in the middle of the gold dot maybe put one inside the purple dot purple oval too there's no gold dot there and put one in the center of our Spiral in the middle. Maybe put some dots on the spiral too. All right, I'm going to call that one good. So there it is. All done. I'll set it somewhere flat so it can dry because you can see the, the black gives it that dimension. The glaze pins are pretty cool. Yeah, she she wants something. That's what it is. Don't you, Callie girl? What you want? She's got to show me something, guys. Let me go see what she's got to show me. She says, right this way, Mama. What is it, honey? You need the light on out there?
here. Bernie, come here, Bernie. Come on. There you go. You glad to be in? The cat said you had to come in. What? All right, come here. We'll just visit with everybody for a little bit. We haven't done that in a while. Come here, Bernadette. Excuse the hair, guys. It's it's trying to grow out. <laughs> All right, Bernie, come here, honey. I say hi. She needs a haircut too. Come here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh stinky. Oh stinky girl. Say hi, everybody. Say I'm a stinky girl. <laughs> Say I'm stinky. Ah, there she goes. Oh, I moved the blanket. Hang on. Here you go, baby. Here, Bernie. Here. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Bernadette. Come on. Come on. Over here. Right here. Right here. Here. Bernie. Bernie. Right there you go. Come on. Lay down. Lay down. I washed your other blanket. You're going to have to wait for it to get out the of the thing. So, anyway, what's everybody up to? You see that card over there laying on its side i ordered that from amazon and one of the wheels i think i told you all about this or maybe that was uh janet and them friday but um i got the wheel in and they sent me the wrong ones the uh ones they sent are too large so i sent them another message and i said thanks for the tire the wheels but they don't fit this cart they're way too big so I made them a little video clip side by side of the broken one and the ones they sent me. And so they said they're going to send me another set. So if this doesn't fix it, I'll just send it back to Amazon and tell them I want a replacement because this is ridiculous. Oh, I did pull out my Bits and Bobs box, but I just don't feel like doing it right now. We started Bits and Bobs. And I had plans of making doodles and maybe quotes on those and things like that. Oh, and here's Tippy. What's the matter, Tippy? Boy, you're really making the camera have issues. Oh, and here comes Howard. That's his dog, you know. I think that's Howard. No, that's Callie. Callie, I'm sorry. I called you Howard. Tippy, say hi. <sighs> Nobody wants to see that. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> oh. Hug a bug. Why do you want to hug a bug? I don't know where Howie was. Well, I guess I'm done. He's laid across the craft table and <laughs> hug in my arm. Yeah, I think they're ready to call it a night. I've been going to bed before Scott gets home because it's just too late to stay up. I could do 11.30, but I can't do 12.30. You're rotten, and they know it. So, I guess that's all I've got for y'all. Oh, Tippy, look up. Say, look up. See? Hello. Love seeing them live again. Yeah, they're around. Oh, here's Callie. Callie. Come here, Callie. She's like, no, I don't want to be on camera. I'll go over here and knock your stuff over. Callie. <whistles> Come on. They want to see your pretty face. Come on. Gotcha. There she is. 
Okay, the pretty girl. Are you upset because I closed the curtains? You weren't ready to have the curtains closed. Get up there. There you go. You can't see anything. It's dark out there. See? Hey, yeah, look. I opened the curtain for you. Look out there. She's like, no, now I want to bother you. <laughs> they like to see you guys. Yeah. She got a dig on her nose. I don't know which one did it, but they got her good on the tip of her nose. Can't believe Howard's in here. Let me see if I can find Howard and then we'll say goodbye. Howdy. Howdy. Big guy, you gotta come say hi to everybody. We want to see the big boy, they want to see my big boy. There's Howard, he was out on the catio, he's not pleased about having to come in, but he's a good boy. Big old sweet Howard, he loves the dog, he sleeps on the dog's bed with the dog sometimes. We're not supposed to say that. We're not supposed to tell. All right, you can go back out on the porch. There's a possum that walks around in the backyard. I think it's trying to get on the catio to get to the cat food, but it can't reach the cat food. So the cats will come and tell me he's out there sometimes. And the other three, I, I, can't, I would go bring them in and show you guys those, but... Sally hates being held, and she will dig my eyes out. Piper doesn't like my cats, so she'd be growling the entire time. And Cole would just sit here and say derp until one of them came in, and he then he'd go and carry on. So they stay out in the bonus room now. <laughs> oh, yes, Howie was very annoyed. He had a perfectly good place out there on the catio, we had a dogwood tree that died in the front yard when we weren't living down here. And we just cut it down and I put it up on the porch and they use that for their digging digging um, post. It helps them to not dig on the furniture. So yeah, that's what I have for my live tonight. I might work on this some and watch something on uh, Netflix. I just finished watching Cursed. And it was kind of like um, King Arthur's Court kind of thing with lots of blood and gore, which I don't usually watch those kind of things. But it was, mm, I don't know, it was something to watch. And then I got hooked on the storyline and then I couldn't stop, even though I was getting grossed out by everything getting chopped and whacked. and ugh. So I watched all of Cursed. I watched all of... I don't remember what that other one was. What was it? Hmm. Now, because I watched all of Cursed, I can't remember the one before that. But it's another one kind of in the same line. Yep, Cursed, yep. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it was pretty bloody. Um, somebody... I don't know if it was a crafter or a sewist that I was watching. I think it was a, somebody on one of the Friday sews. There's a hashtag, Friday sews hashtag. And they come on and um, all of the people that sew will tell you what they're working on, what they've made, um, maybe what books they're watch, uh, reading, what shows they're watching. And they um, so there's a show that if you wanted to see it, you needed to watch it quick because it was going to be removed. And um, it's about an old, old murder case and that kind of stuff. I love crime dramas. I just love them. I don't know. I've got a criminal justice degree, so maybe that's why. But 
I want to go find this, but now I can't remember who I watched to find out the name, but I'm sure it's one of last Friday's sewists. So I, I don't know. It's like un, unfound. Is it the unfound or, oh, I can't remember what it is. You're watching the Beauty and the Beast series. Beauty and the Beast series. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm not going to hold you up. I'm sure there's somebody on a lot more interesting than me tonight. <laughs> I'm just not feeling it tonight. Maybe I'll come up with a really cool project for us to do. I do want to finish my little my little sheet of caricatures caricatures to send out. Ah, thanks, Mary. And um, I'm glad you like the stencils and were able to get them, you know, at a reduced cost. That's always good when you have a little gift card or whatever to, to spend. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great night. And uh, see some of you Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern in my group if you want to come and hang out in the room. It's nothing. We just kind of sit around and chit chat and talk about food and do whatever we're working on. You don't even have to plan to, because nobody's putting on a tutorial or anything unless it's an impromptu thing there. All right. Bye guys. If I can find the end screen. Okay. Bye.